I'm Andy, welcome back to the channel, thank you for tuning in. I make videos about photography, videography and that kind of thing. Hopefully I'll have some tips that you can pick up on. This video we answer that time-aged question. Can you buy a carbon fibre tripod for under 50 quid? Yes you can. Thank you very much for watching, we'll see you next week. Okay, maybe I'm taking the YouTube shorts idea a little too far. Lots of these videos these days start with some kind of disclosure, so here it is. This video is sponsored by my wallet. I went out and bought this, I didn't go out, went on Amazon. Actually, I got the wife to go on Amazon and bought this tripod for just under 50 pounds. My idea was to do a comparison between this low-cost tripod and something of a little bit more quality. So I contacted the three-legged thing and they said, <laughs> You must be... Let me be clear, if this were not on offer, it was 51% off, I would have gone nowhere near it. And that's primarily because it doesn't have the words Manfrotto, Gitzo, I footage on the side. It has the words National Geographic. I do not know how long this offer is going to be on for. Over a week later since ordering it, it's still at the offer price. So it may well be at the offer price when you look at this video. But if it's the year 2030, there's a good chance that you're in a bunker somewhere underground breathing filtered air, waiting for climate change to burn itself out above you. And the offer's probably finished. But also, if you are in a bunker underground looking for a travel tripod, that's quite some optimism. I can't ignore the fact that this is under 45 quid. It begs the question, how much does this cost to make? Because it's made in China. It's then boxed, shipped around the world, warehoused, and all of these people that touch it take their profit off of it. So if Amazon can sell it to me at just under 45 pounds, what does it cost to make? It really must be very little more than a few grains of rice. And at that level, you expect it to be utter, utter rubbish. But it's not. I'm not saying it's professional grade, but it's nothing like as bad as you might think. This is a travel tripod, so the legs fold up on themselves and end up with a compact unit that's only 15 inches long. And if you're not in the imperialistic world, that equates to about three average-sized hamsters nose to tail. It's also just under three pounds or about the 11 and a half average hamsters. But unlike hamsters, when you unpack it, it won't run off. This is a five section tripod and with all the legs extended, the bottom one is pretty thin, but it doesn't wobble that much. Yeah, there's a bit of flex in it, but it's not horrendous. But obviously the weight is more of an issue in keeping the thing upright in a gale. So for that, they have included a hook on the end of the center column and the center column as you can see comes out it can be inverted in the tripod the legs can be splayed further out to get it very low to the ground and there's also a little spigot that replaces the center column which allows you to get the ball head of the tripod very close to the actual tripod body thus removing an extra inch and a half to two inches off of it if that's what you need. We interrupt this recording for an important announcement. Please click the like button. If you want to buy this tripod there's links in the description and there are affiliate links so I'll get the tiniest percentage back from Amazon if you go and click one of those. I do recommend it. When I say that I what I mean is I don't recommend giving me money. I do recommend giving me money. Let's turn to some of the bits that you get with it. There's the ubiquitous piece of paper, which uh, they laughingly call instructions. The pictograms within this are okay, but I have to say rather poor when it comes to talking about the use of this tripod as a monopod. Yes, it can be a monopod as well. Like loads of tripods these days, one of the legs unscrews and can become a monopod. It says so in the instructions. What it fails to mention in the instructions is that unless you use the central column with it, you get 
a monopod that is, could best be described as stumpy. There's also an important note in the instructions which I shall read to you. Don't use it in seawater. OK, I won't use it in seawater. Well, I might use it in seawater. I'll be interested to see what happens. I'm melting! Don't expose this tripod to sunlight or light temperature condition for long time. I think I've bought a travel tripod for subterranean adventures. In 2030, when we're all living underground in bunkers, there's not going to be no sunlight. This is future-proofed. Now, what professional photographer doesn't want to go out and be embarrassed by a bag that has that on it? It's a wonderful thing. It sounds lovely. No, it doesn't sound lovely, does it? It's horrible. But it does fulfil the purpose of carrying your tripod. And I'm sure you could probably cover that up. In it you'll get the tripod and some hardware. And the hardware that comes with it uh, is loose in the bag. Well, it, it's not loose to start with. It comes in a couple of additional plastic bags, which are probably quite unnecessary. But there's no pouch inside this, so unless you're really careful when you unpack your uh, travel tripod every time, you're going to uh, lose your hardware. I should have thought about that beforehand because the floor's a bit messy. I've lost my hardware. Hold on. Here's the hardware. I got two, three Allen keys. Uniquely with this product, two of them are the same size. You also get a joining piece that allows you to connect the centre column to the monopod leg creating a monopod that's actually useful rather than something that is about uh, that long. And it took me a long while to work out what that bit was for. But once I worked it out, that was fine. I had a working monopod, but by this time I also had a bipod which fell over. Now I think it's probably time that we spoke about build quality because this kind of price point you don't really expect very much. But actually, it's really not bad. All of the hinges and the main structure, the central part, is cast aluminium. The ratchet parts of it are cast aluminium. Hell, even the springs are metal. I think the build quality of the leg sections is perfectly acceptable, as is the centre column. Where the quality really falls over is in the ball head. The ball head is the cheapest part of it in terms of its feel and its movement it's really not very nice. That's not to say it doesn't function, it does. But the knobs have that kind of raspy feeling to them that makes you wonder that if you don't grip it quite tight enough, are you gonna strip the skin off your fingers if you slip? The main knob that tightens the ball itself doesn't have a great deal of finesse and it will take some practice. To start with, it's either on or off, and as you get used to it, you get some more control with the friction. But if you're not careful and you undo it too far, your camera's going to go thwack. The ball head isn't great. That said, it's got a degree graduated rotating base to allow smooth panning, and the panning movement is actually rather smooth as well. No complaints about that whatsoever, it's just that those knobs are horrible. On top of the ball head is an Arca Swiss style plate and it's got two small circular spirit levels. So would I recommend that you go out and buy this tripod? Well of course it does depend on what you're putting on the top of it. If you've got some heavy DSLR then perhaps not, but it will take 8 kilos. Hold on a minute, what's that? Remember when I said this earlier? Nowhere near it. Because it doesn't have the words Manfrotto, Gitzo, Manfrotto, Gitzo, Manfrotto, Git. Take a wild guess at which British company owns Manfrotto and Gitzo. That one. So it seems that what we have here is actually a tripod that is manufactured by somebody that knows what they're doing. Sure, it's at the low end of their scale, but that doesn't matter. Whichever way we look at it, this is a bargain, and you should go and buy one, especially if it's under £50. 
I'm sure when I dropped that stuff out of the bag, there were four items. <laughs>